Greetings everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Advocate Pule Mazilo. I want to start by thanking all those who have been part of this journey with us. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And if you are new, you are also more than welcome to subscribe to this new YouTube and even to press the notification bell so that when we upload, you are able to be notified that there is a, a new video uploaded. The purpose of this channel is to teach South African law and to teach the word of God. Now today, I am teaching on the law on unfair dismissal. Have you been dismissed from your job unfairly? Let me start by defining the concept unfair dismissal. In our last video, we discussed constructive dismissal. Now today we are discussing unfair dismissal. What is unfair dismissal? Unfair dismissal is the termination of the employment contract by the employer, not by yourself, by the employer without good cause or without good reason or a fair procedure or both. What do, I, what do I mean by that? I mean that you are being dismissed when there is no good reason. And not only that, it can be maybe we are dismissed for a good reason, but the correct procedure of, of dismissing you was not followed. Thirdly, it could be both. It could be you are dismissed without good cause or without good reason. And on top of that, the correct procedure was not followed. Now you will recognize that there is a distinction or a difference between unfair dismissal and constructive dismissal. With unfair dismissal, it's when the employer himself, your boss, initiate the dismissal. He or she gives you a letter to the effect that you are dismissed. Whereas with constructive dismissal, you initiated the process of the dismissal in the sense that you submitted a resignation letter. And the reason why you submitted this resignation letter, it was due to the conduct of the employer. As we explained last time, it is because the situation or the circumstances at work was unbearable and you had no option but to resign. Now, in our definition of unfair dismissal, we spoke about fair reasons. There are no fair reasons. We spoke about the fact that the correct procedure was not followed. Now, when we talk about the fact that there are no fair reasons, it's when we talk about substantive. And what does that mean? It means that on what grounds or on the grounds in which you were dismissed or the grounds that they are stating, they are not fair and there is no good cause. So under which circumstances, the question is, can you claim that your dismissal was substantively incorrect or on which ground can you claim that your dismissal was unfair? Number one is because there's no fair reason, or as they would say, there is no good cause. Number two, the reason was not good enough to justify the dismissal. You must remember that in labor law, they say dismissal is the death penalty of labor law. In other words, it's something that is exercised as a last resort. It could be 
because you communicated, you, 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 you rather, you have done misconduct that was gross. Or it could be because there was repeated commission of offenses in the workplace, or it can be any other offense in your workplace that is deemed dismissible. And you also state that your employer did not follow the correct procedure. Now, we have spoken about the correct procedure. What is that correct procedure? Number one, the employer must investigate the issue or the alleged offense or the alleged misconduct, if it is a case of misconduct. Once that is investigated, he must issue it or he must put it down in writing that this is what we have investigated and give it to you in writing. In this instance, he will hand over a charge sheet which will state the alleged offenses. Once that is done, the employer must conduct a disciplinary hearing. And this disciplinary hearing must be chaired by a chairperson who is an independent third party. It is not advisable that the chairperson of the disciplinary proceedings must be an employee of the employer who works with you because it will be very difficult for him to be fair or to be impartial. So it must be somebody from outside. If you are working for government, it must not be somebody from the, the same department. It must be somebody from outside. If it's in a company, they must solicit the, the services of a person from outside so that we are sure that this person is impartial. Once the disciplinary hearing has been conducted, a decision will be made. Now, if they decide whatever decision is made, so in this instance, because we're talking about dismissal, if they decide you are dismissed, now this decision must also be communicated to a dismissed employee in writing. And in it, they must be able to state it, they must state it in writing and they must, they must give you an opportunity to appeal. Now we've dealt with the procedure that has to be followed. The next question that we can ask ourselves is, when can we say the dismissal is fair? When can it be fair? There are three grounds under which a dismissal can be fair. It can be one as regards misconduct by the employee. Two, capacity of the employee. Three, it can be as regards the operational requirements of the employer. Now, let me unpack these three grounds that can be deemed grounds for a fair dismissal. We said number one is conduct. What about conduct? The employee must have contravened or violated a workplace rule. He must have disobeyed a certain rule. Number two, the employee must be aware of that rule. And this rule, it must be lawful, it must be reasonable. For example, 
The employer can say, in this place, we start at 8 o'clock. That is lawful. That is reasonable. And in most places, if not all places, employees know what is the starting time where they work. So this can qualify as an example where from time to time, the employee comes late. This is the rule of the company. He's aware of it. It's reasonable and it's lawful. And he knows about this rule. And it must be a rule that is applied uniformly. It must not be a rule that is just applicable to this one person. And dismissal must be appropriate action. You must remember that there are different types of offenses. Some are serious, some are less serious. So for you to arrive as an employer at a decision to dismiss an employee, you must consider that. You must consider that. Is it a serious offense? Is it a repeated offense? Is the employee a first offender? That should influence the decision to dismiss or not to dismiss. Number two, the second ground. We said it's capacity. Poor performance by the employee or maybe the employee has been injured. Now, in all these instances, we don't just start by dismissing an employee. For example, as regards poor performance, is this an employee who's still on probation? Will it be fair for us to dismiss this particular employee without giving him sufficient time to learn about the job? Was he given an opportunity? Was he cancelled? Was he trained? You don't just start, as an, start by saying as an employer, no, he's performing poorly. There must be training. There must be mentoring before you arrive at the decision that, you know what, I rest my case. This employee is really not performing and it's a affecting productivity of the company. Number two, injury. If the employee is injured and is not in a position to perform his function well, he may be dismissed. But also even here, there are factors that has to be considered. Is there a possibility that now that he's injured, can we now give him another job? As an example, probably this person was a, a, a security guard. He got involved in a car accident. Can he still perform the duties of a, a security guard? Or if he's in a wheelchair, does it mean that we discard him? No. Probably can we consider giving him another job which is office bound, desk bound, so that he can continue to perform his duties in that company? Or is the position so bad that there's nothing else that the company can do but to board this employee? The third ground that we refer to is operational requirements. This is where, for example, the company is not doing well. It has a financial strain. In this instance, the company can decide to restructure and to retrench some of its employees. Even here, it's not a decision that employers will take willy-nilly. There will be a process 
in terms of Labor Relations Act that will unfold to arrive at the decision as to who will go, who will stay. Sometimes they will use what they used to call LIFO, last in, first out, or vice versa. It, the, after negotiations, even with their trade unions, to decide whether this person is going or not. If any of these three grounds, misconduct, capacity, operational requirements are there, the dismissal will be considered fair. But even if it's fair, the party or the employer is still expected to follow the procedure that we have outlined. If he decides, for example, this person has committed misconduct, we are suspending him, you don't just start by saying to a person, we are suspending you. There's a process that has to unfold. You will write a notice to the employee to say, based on the following reason, we have taken a decision to suspend. You want to provide us with reasons why we cannot go ahead with this decision. And then they will respond. So there's always a process that will follow or that will unfold prior to the actual, uh, uh, to the actual dismissal. For example, there are instances where there should be a written warning. In some instances, not. It will depend on a case by case. Like if the employee is accused of gross misconduct, probably there may be no reason why we have to go through written warnings. The employer has a responsibility to prove that indeed this person was involved in misconduct or there is incapacity. Finally, once the employee receives that notification that indeed you are dismissed, and as I said earlier on, the chairperson would also give them an opportunity to appeal, he would then appro approach the appropriate tribunal and lodge his or her appeal. I hope you find this helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe and please do comment and do press the notification bell so that when we upload, you get notified. Thank you very much.